All right. Well, weak pop. Far was, away from it was, the mic. It was a weak pop, but it was, it was on the back of it instead mm. of in the front of it. Mm. Got to get all on it. Got Tried that to, weak pop. Didn't have it at an angle. <laughs> Speaking of a weak pop, Cam Newton's shoulder, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, we want that transition. Yeah. We wanted to kick it off with just a, a little touch of kind of current-ish events to uh, start things off. We're going to touch on two quarterbacks here. Uh, one, a newly found kind of starter who was an old starter and then wasn't a starter, almost retired, and now is a starter. So we're going to Nick Foles second, and we'll start with Cam Newton first here. Um, basically, the big news of the week was that David Tepper came out, and this is the new owner of the Carolina Panthers, and said in so many words that, you know, if we need Cam Newton to sit out for a year, he might need to sit out for a year to get right, basically, which not really sure why you needed to say that. Um, and he did follow it up with saying, you know, if, if if we could sit him out for a year and he would be, you know, good to go and right, you know, it's pretty much a no brainer is kind of sure how all that transpired. But it, it was the key it word. was it was unnecessary to even do that. So a couple of questions arose in my mind. Was it one just this is a newer guy on the block and you're in there talking to people and, you know, sometimes you say you a probably divulge much? a little bit more information like. Currently, if the Colts, if Andrew Luck had a little bit of a shoulder problem through at the end of the season, not saying that he did, I've heard nothing. I'm just saying, using it as an example, like you wouldn't hear shit about it until they absolutely had to say something about Andrew Luck's shoulder being a problem. Right. There's no like there wasn't any reason for them to for him to say that Cam could sit out all of 2019 to get right here. Let that play out. And then at some point when it's looking like, hey, we might need to let that whole thing play out you do so my big question is is one if you're a cam owner fantasy wise how concerned are you and two i guess the second part of what i'm thinking david tepper's kind of doing is kind of putting it out there like hey we can kind of take a quarterback over here and maybe if cam has to sit out this gives us a reason to take him and maybe and through 2019 he plays pretty decent and we could be like well we played pretty good with this new guy. We don't want to rock the boat, and we're going to ship Cam out of here. And there's been some rumblings if Cam Newton you know, is the guy, should he be the guy, which that kind of drives my thought process behind that whole thing of saying, did you say this just to plant some seeds of saying that, hey, maybe we might be taking a quarterback or picking up a quarterback and trying to uh, see what we could have in that and not have such a up and down? Because when Cam's on, Casey's, championship cam casey's coming out with a little conspiracy theory there just a little bit but uh, i don't mind why, why else would you i mean maybe it was the first one of saying you know you're new and you got caught up in the room and what was going on and you know you wanted to say something to get everybody's attention sh- sure but, but i think there's no doubt about it that you saw it in the in the play the physical play on the field from cam newton as far as a passer, especially those last couple weeks. Was of the having season. a great season by all accounts in the first half. Six and two, and then lost everything else. I mean, that was the epic collapse for the Panthers. And you could, so if they get the luck treatment, if Panther, if it like, I get what he's saying. And you said this when you got started. Like, if, if the new owner of the Panthers comes out and says, hey, you give me, I'll take if if I could get a year off of Cam, but he comes back and does what Luck did this year, basically as part, not necessarily complete stats because Cam's only had Cam's never thrown as many touchdowns as Luck did this year, but you know, performance wise, I'm my shoulder's good. After the first couple games where Luck got benched for the heave at the end of the, mm-hmm. you know, throwing it in the uh, the Hail Mary, right? That was crazy. The first couple of weeks, everybody made a big deal about that. We were like, "That's not a big deal." No. Cam Newton got taken out for his own heave at the end of the game there, and then next week or two, he's benched. So I get what he's saying. I'd, I, if, as far as the fantasy stuff, one quarterback league, you probably, I mean, I guess you're worried enough to ha- you got because you probably got to find a replacement. Superflex league. This could be. This is crushing, right? Crushing in a in a super flex or a two quarterback league because there's not as much replace, half, more, less than half replaceability. Unless you got Nick Foles sitting on your bench with Cam. This Newton. is true, but you know this in the super flex and the two quarterback leagues, it's more than double the demand for the quarterbacks because some people want to have three and four of them. Like it's not even you know in a, in a one quarterback league you got that one guy that wants to have two or three quarterbacks but at the most part maybe a couple have two yeah the, yeah but there's you can get a quarterback in a one quarterback league and under 
any circumstances, you can figure it out. There are those rogue home leagues we've heard about where nobody will trade a quarterback, which is just weird. But in a real competitive line and real competitive league where real money's on the line, quarterbacks move around. Superflex and in, in two quarterback leagues, not the case. Tough. It's hard out there. Yeah, I mean, if you're a Cam owner, you definitely have to be, you know, sweating bullets here. You got to be a little nervous, a little tight in your in your booty hole. Uh, looking at the contract, so Cam signed a. a a five-year, hundred and three million dollar deal uh, that was back in. And it's like doesn't even really tell me. I guess 2015. Um, they have a it says they have a potential out in 19. Mm-hmm. It'd be eight and a half dead, eight and a half million dead cap. I, so that's like something to to maybe keep in the back of your mind. Even more building the conspiracy theory here. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it begs. It's like why would that owner come out and say that? He doesn't need Except to say for that, that he just January. didn't know any better and just got caught up. But but he's got to have someone that's like right. vetting what you, he's about to say to people. You right? would really like to think that. Not so, if he's the boss, man. Right. Which, Jerry Jones ain't nobody vetting him, buddy. He, he came in there and he did what was the kind of big dingling swing and, and bought up the Panthers because he had a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, good so for him. maybe maybe he doesn't. But I just I can't understand why you would say that without having some sort of conspiracy theory behind there of maybe hey we're trying to plant a seed of being like don't be too alarmed if we do do something like this like no it's not the end of Cam we're just you know bracing ourselves for what could be a Camless 2019. Well, I thought that that would that meant that they were trying to get people to trade up either past them for quarterback or trade to get their pick for a so quarterback you went a in the bit, upcoming draft. Opposite direction a little bit that they didn't well, really want a quarterback. And that they were trying to put out the vibes that they wanted. You know, I thought this was one. the earliest. Yes, the earliest. Um, hey, this is what we're, we're thinking about going quarterback. So you guys need to yeah. look at our pick. If you if you want to get one of these Dwayne Haskins or whatever, you're going to be looking to get over the Panthers because we're ready to take a quarterback. Which in turn, you would think just in most cases when teams do that, either they're looking for a nice trade back or just for somebody to jump in front of them, take a quarterback and push one more good position right. player down to them that's not and one more good non-quarterback down one more spot in the draft sure so but i like your conspiracy a lot better it's, <laughs> it's so much more fun than what i'm way juicier about. yeah so then as far as the fantasy implications obviously you're crushing the two quarterback and the one quarterback league because when cam is good i do think he's can carry you to a fantasy championship if he st- if you were in a startup last year though he was at a discount because he's coming yeah. off a down year like early cam was so expensive that you probably would be more devastated in, in that capacity, whereas like this past year, you you had to spend a little bit to yeah. get him more than maybe you might be a little comfortable spending for a quarterback. But the upside was just so much so, so there. Sure, but like I couldn't be mad at the Panthers if they did want to move on from him. I mean, he's so it's like a double edged sword because quarterbacks so hard to to nail and and you need it and and they have to be good for you to win. But like Cam. I don't know that he can win him a Super Bowl. Like he got to the Super Bowl and they were it, it, they were within eight points and he fumbled and he didn't even try to recover the fumble. Like he, I don't know how much this cat can 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 take you to the promised land. Like he's got to be on the high high and he's got to be loving himself and everything has to be going great because the minute some adversity comes in there, sure you get he's pouty like, cam and then and then you're done and right. then he's done. You get pouty cam and it's not great, but that's what I'm saying. When he's when he's good, he's good. I, I, I look at it as, you know, people are quick to say, oh, you, you ready to get rid of Cam? And it's like, hell no, I'm not ready to get rid of Cam. Like, who else are you going to get? Like, yeah. I know that there's some quarterbacks coming up. Um, and we, we st- there was a big quarterback draft this previous year with Baker and Sam. And we still don't know if half of those guys or really any of those guys are going to be really good. We think Baker and Sam Darnold are going to be good. Jury's still out on most of those other guys. But we all those guys could flop this next year, and all of them could be it's so hard to find a quarterback, at least with Cam. There's a built-in somewhat of a floor that he can run around for a little bit. He's a bigger guy. He can make plays. Cam and if you have a decent defense around him, and I like where their offense was heading, like I, I don't hate it. I don't love Cam's attitude sometimes, and I don't like pouty Cam. Well, nobody I don't, I don't likes mind pouty someone's, Cam. I don't mind the attitude necessarily, but when it affects your play right. greatly. Well, it's great. It's a, When it's the attitude's working with you, it's great, and when it's working against you, it's miserable. Well, through through eight weeks with the bye week, they're six and two, um, and nobody's talking about we need another quarterback. Right. 
And even in, in as far as fantasy goes, no pa- pouty cams nowhere inside. As far as, fan- as fantasy goes, let's say all year long because he had week fourteen and fifteen were down weeks. He couldn't throw the ball, didn't do anything, and his shoulder was hurt and didn't even want to run. But those legs, and for your fantasy season, my man's averaging twenty two point eight ga- points a game with those two duds at the end of the year before when his arm basically stopped working. So you can easily ki- he was probably averaging he was probably the quarterback three or four. Mm-hmm. Every for a while. on you know every week and he was on one for sure he was he he was on a heater that's what so yeah exactly like 18 31 31 20 26 27 30 23 17 28 and even when he, he his shoulder was hurting two weeks before they just he was just running around like right so they so, probably should have they probably taken a little bit of this self-inflicted because they probably should have pulled him uh, yes. sooner well, they were into tailspin, and they were like, for a while, they, they still could have made the playoffs. Right. Because they started 6-2. So and two. Yeah. So, s- since they were 6-2 and two for, you know, they lose a couple games, and you're still in the playoff hunt. So, they were trying to sneak in, and they just couldn't get it going, and it went downhill and got eliminated in sack cam. But, as far as the team goes, like you said, like, and I'll give this to Panthers credit as a team – I've never heard one person say they want any. And Greg Olson's for he's always in front of the mic. Mm-hmm. They love Cam, mm-hmm. and and there might be some guys in there on that team that's like, I think we could go to the promised land, like Jay says, without Cam. Maybe we won't ever cross that hurdle. But on a week to week basis, my man can move the chains with his legs when he needs to. His arms good. I mean, he, he, like he he's not Andrew Luck with his arm, but what he does with his arm. Because of what he does with his legs, he doesn't have yeah. to, you know, he doesn't have to diagnose plays like a traditional pocket quarterback who can't run because he is Cam Newton. He's bigger than the linebackers. So everything that he does moving forward with his body brings the defense up. And when he had that year, we had Ted Ginn, the Super Bowl year, like it was, he, there, he could do no wrong. Mm-hmm. So if you could find a, a happy medium between that guy and, you know, just stay away from Patty Cam good, would be all right. But good. he can move the chains. And, and when he gets you in the red zone, he's as good as a touchdown. Yeah. So he, he can win ball games. It's not about winning the ball games in the regular season. It's just the adversity of the playoffs. Good skill positions around him right now. I think on the up, you'll lose Funches, but I mean, I don't think that's a huge loss for you. You probably fill him in with some other middle of the road player or maybe nobody at all. And you just keep the group that you have mm. and roll forward. I like all of those guys moving forward. Uh, you need an offensive line. They had some injuries on there for the first some time their, in a while. They didn't have right. a good offensive line. They had, had some a injuries offensive line for a while, but you need to protect, you know, luck got was, was banged up because of taking so many hits and having, you know, the terrible offensive line, you know, I'd, I don't know if there's a little bit of correlation there, but cam takes extra hits, extra uh, hits. maybe not getting sacked as much, but, um, definitely takes hit on all those runs. You Absolutely, got to be taking hits. Um, if he does have to sit, the light at the end of the tunnel is at least you just saw Andrew Luck sit for a year, and you know, by all accounts, it looked like Andrew Luck by the end of the season was back and and as good or better than he's ever been. Um, so I think you know it is a little bit. If it's a two quarterback league, it's a little devastating. If it's a one quarterback league, you could probably get around it. But when he's good, he's championship level taking your team to the promised land fantasy wise yeah um so I, but i do think there is at least a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel even if he's not on the for whatever reason the panthers when he comes back and healthy um you know i don't think you can go too wrong with can in your quarterback in fantasy so bummer that the shoulder's injured but light at the end of the tunnel if he does sit out and gets right oh topic number two let's do it the current ish events Let's uh we, we plugged a little Nick Foles. We'll start just right there. You believe in in Nick Foles right now. Gonna get a contract somewhere else, most likely. Um we'll get into the speculation and a couple of other little things of connected some dots uh, at the end of the Foles talk. You guys in or out on Foles? If you have Foles in a two quarterback league, are you 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 buying, selling? I mean, I think you should be selling in the bubble right now for super super flex and two quarterback leagues. Let's Foles is year in fantasy points totals, and I know he hadn't played a ton of games in his career. Ninety nine fantasy points, two hundred and seventy three fantasy points. That was with Chip Kelly. Everybody knows twenty seven touchdowns, two picks. Played his way, one hundred and thirty four points the next year. Played his way into a huge contract with St. Louis. That got him thinking about retirement. It was so bad. 98, 
backed up Alex Smith in Kansas City, 28. And again, this, he's not playing, but it's, the average is still... He doesn't score fantasy points. He doesn't play. When he does play, it's it's he's a, he's a winner. And he's not necessarily a prolific fantasy quarterback. He's not out there running around. He's not running in the mm-hmm. end zone. He does have some touchdowns here and there, but how who was calling for Nick Foles in the first three weeks of the season? Mm-hmm. Where was he? Yeah. Hey, I know. Wentz back on the field. I know you weren't excited about your fantasy production out of out of Nick Foles the first three games of the season. Yeah. It, I t- well, it was six points week one against the Falcons terrible defense. 19 points week two on the road. At, and that's all he could muster was 19.6 points against Tampa Bay, the 32nd defense in the league. And then week three. They were hot coming off of beating uh, <laughs> the New Saints. Orleans. Yeah, right. And then he gets 10 points. Um, and uh, Wentz comes back and he sits out and he comes back and goes 10 by, points. By week four, they, Philadelphia was having a conniption and they needed to have Wentz back in there. Right. All right. But let's, again, this the, the Nick Foles loves comes from wins. Like he did have 35 points against Houston in week 16. Week 17, they had to win the game to make the playoffs at Washington. 16 points. 16 points in a winner against Chicago on the road. 16 points against Chicago on the road. That's probably like 40 points adjusted because <laughs> he played against Chicago. But I'm like, and then 16 points against New Orleans last week. Like there are, there's not fantasy points, and you take them away from the Whisperer, which is you know Peterson and and his happy place, which is Philadelphia. I I think you I think this is a huge sell window for sub, super flex and two quarterback leagues. You basically just got gifted somebody sure. who went on your bench. You had him on you had him coming into the year, or he may have changed hands because of when Wentz came back or whatever. Right. But I know we had him on our on our bench, and we were trying to plug him in. First got gifted couple. him last year. Basically, we had him sitting around. You got he, gifted he came him again, in and we kind of didn't really do much with him. Right, and now we're getting regifted. And I, we got gifted again, and I just I think you should be moving him here. That's what I would do. Is there a market for Nick Foles out there? Are there like Nick Foles truthers? Well, I, I think I, well, I it think, only takes one. Yeah, it, well, one. Yeah, it only takes one, and, and two. Like he's going to be a starter. So anybody in a super flex who's going to be a starter and has been at least viable and has a little bit of buzz. I mean, I, I don't think there there isn't a market for you. In yeah. A, you know, if somebody's going to pay him to be their quote unquote franchise quarterback. Well, here. he's worth way more than a wide receiver three or wide receiver two in a two quarterback league. Yeah. Just because he's a starting he's, quarterback. Right. Exactly. And Anybody that's taking snaps on Sunday is worth. And he's going to get at least probably two years a run of whether he's good, bad or, you know, to, I, I will say Foles said he's grown up a lot and he's 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 more comfortable with the quarterback he is because let's go back to that good season. That was Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly's really first full year into the league getting going, and nobody knew what to do with Chip Kelly's offense. Like defensive coordinator, Chip Kelly tore the league up. He went, he took a four and 12 team to the playoffs two years in a row. And then he, you know, he, there right. was Sim- his, his downfall was bringing in Sam Bradford, but he should have kept the more athletic Nick Foles now that we can look back on it with good, clear hindsight. Basketball but, player. Right, right, exactly. Blow post and he could drain threes. <laughs> but it's just, I think I think you gotta if he's in two quarterback league he's worth a ton just because he's gonna be a starter. But before I see him not really live up to the there's this Nick Foles love Big Dick Nick is what they call him. Yeah, and you know like you Old gotta, Saint Nick. All these things you gotta roll you gotta roll <laughs> like that Nick over. Foley and dynamite, but yeah, whatever right. you gotta roll that over now before you get lost in the. So we have him in uh in the UDPL, right? Yeah, but we don't have enough we don't have enough interest in the league to really like Casey said, we didn't trade him when we had a chance because we didn't send out enough offers to get it done. Well, now we'll have plenty of time. Right. He's going to be this he's going to get a, he's going to be a franchise guy. Like he just went from be he went from being the backup to being the starter back to the backup. Right. You got till week 1 to get so, this done. So now we got plenty of time. He's going to like like I'm saying he's getting 2 years of like you know anonymity here of saying like all right we're he's going to be locked somebody's going to pay him a ton of money for it and he's going to be their starter for a year or two so i agree so we got him we also have kirk cousins which is kind of a bummer and uh, bordelais and then bordelais was our second quarterback we might have the new jacksonville jaguar quarterback <laughs> with nick Foles. and i my first thought was like all right we got a second quarterback because it's a two qb league i mean it was a super flex but it's pretty much you, you we inherited the team for any new listener we inherited this team Right. And so 
I mean, if we trade Nick Foles, like we got to get a quarterback. Back. Oh, for sure. But I'm I'm looking to I'm going. Oh, this is going to be one of those things. Like we talked about Tariq Cohen, I think on a Patreon show a little while ago, and just like, oh, you sell Tariq Cohen. Well, who are you going to get? Like I'm looking to take. Like I'm, I want to take Kurt, Tariq Cohen and something and try to get like a more stable f- workhorse running back. I'm trying to take Nick Foles, add something to him and get a more stable uh, QB two for my super flex. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's just going to fetch you another, you know, you're not going to trade starter for starter here just because right. somebody likes Nick Foles better well, than they like. And that's why uh, I said Derek Carr. Well, yeah. Well, that would be the, the maybe that you could get that swap. That's why I said he's worth more than a wide receiver, a wide receiver three, or even he's worth more than a good wide receiver two, just because there is no – it's hard to move around a quarterback in a super flex in a two-quarterback league. And that's why uh, Derek Carr's name came up, because he's a very disrespected quarterback. Right. But that dude is a starting quarterback. Moving forward – you know he's going to be in the league. If he let, if Oakland lets him go, and then when they move to Vegas or whatever, let's maybe they take Kyler Murray this year just for kicks. Yeah, got a lot of picks. Maybe they take Kyler, go to Vegas. Derek Carr's out. Somebody's going to give Derek Carr a chance to be their franchise guy. Absolutely. So I agree. He, I like in a two quarterback on the down. I think Derek Carr can play. He showed at the end of the year that he played pretty well. Jordy Nelson had some juice in the tank and. He didn't. What wasn't the terrible. Raiders uh, uh, as a team played pretty well together. They, they had to beat the Steelers somehow. Ugh. Like you know, <laughs> they, don't remind me. Yeah, so they had to. They they played pretty good. Considering Not that I like the Steelers, the but. entire world wrote them off for tanking, and they traded yeah. Amari Cooper. They traded Khalil Mack, and they just the entire world had them being like, "What's going on with the?" The coach, where they just got a ten year, ten year, hundred million dollar quarter uh, right. so contract. So he did, the owner didn't have enough money to pay Khalil Mack even, so they had he to gave it all him. to the coach. Right, <laughs> right. So, real quick before we take our first uh, break here, uh, Jaguars hired DeFilippo. A lot of dot connecting of Foles going to the Jaguars. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Does that does that do anything for you? Does that make you? I mean, and connecting the, that. DeFilippo was the quarterbacks coach of the Eagles um, when Foles was over there on the Super Bowl team in the run. And does that make you more comfortable with Foles potentially going to Jacksonville? How does that does that weigh in on your? I mean, maybe a little bit because like at least we have a second quarterback. You know? Yeah, I mean that's what I'm like. If he's on Foles is in every super flex and two quarterback league, Foles is already on somebody's roster. Unless for you got a funky league where you got. You know, short, short benches. Every quarterback's rostered in those types of leagues. So you just got gifted a quarterback. You got gifted mm-hmm. a starter. What are you going to do with him? Like Damian Williams. Yeah. Um, Who we're going to talk about a little later. So does, does, but does the Filippo thing move the needle for you at all and making you want to say, yeah, maybe I'll give Nick a, tri- a chance? Or well, see, the, the D Filippo thing right now, I was just reading about that on Roto World. Like, that's the part that really has you. There's a fence obviously rider there. Obviously, nothing's happened yet. They're, but. They're, well, uh, yeah, obviously, they don't have foals, but they it had they did hire him. The Jags brought in D Filippo, mm-hmm. which he got fired because he wouldn't run the ball enough in Minnesota because he wants to spread. He wants to be, let's... Well, you know, he was trying to showcase his talents of saying, hey, I'm going to run this crazy i'm gonna run this pass happy offense and look at what i like that because that's know, where the, that's the league what was kind of going yeah and and he came in and, and there he's he wants to pass it and the jags want to run it what i'm saying is is I, i'm not necessarily saying that he he did want to so pass take it Foles i, out I of think it he's trying to showcase the passing of what and like hey this is what everyone was looking for because he was trying to audition for a head coaching job at that yeah. point yeah Coughlin knows him. He's been with Coughlin. He knows he's not going to Coughlin's not just going to be like, hey, go out there and throw the shit out of the football like Coughlin's going to want some balance. Yeah. So I don't you know, I think that's he kind of knows more, what he's getting into a little that's bit. That's what I'm kind of just kind of my I just when I saw that and I'm putting those things together, you know, Filippo came from Doug Peterson and all this good stuff. And it's just a little bit of a, a budding of heads of offensive philosophies almost unless Filippo says, OK, I'm coming back over here to you, and because you gave me my first start in coaching back in the day, and and you know when I'm talking about the uh, general man, the the head man for the Jags, the old guy, what's yeah, his name? Coughlin. Coughlin. Him yeah, and Coughlin. Right. Him and Coughlin are boys from back in the day. Yeah. So like maybe he's like, all right, Coughlin, I'll come over here and give you some balance, but he didn't want to give Mike Zimmer balance. Right. So that, well, that, that's just a little bit, just a little confusing for me. So it doesn't. So two, it doesn't move the foals needle for you then. No, well, not necessarily. 
Okay. And there's no guarantee Foles is going no, to Jacksonville. No, but, but it's an easy dot to connect there. But he's going to go that somewhere. That being said, that who it, it's the fact that the Jags bring in Filippo, who is I'm at, at least if nothing else, he was familiar. And very and he was he was one of the he was very close to being a head coach last year. He was a hot name getting tossed yeah. around. So like the fact that they bring that's what him I was in, saying. That's why what he was so doing I was guess, Zimmer. I guess it, it's, it's not like the Eagles didn't have at least somebody. They weren't doing it with one running back, but they were right running the ball. I guess for the Jags, there's light at the end of the tunnel for the passing offense bringing in Filippo. Mm-hmm. I guess, because it's just it's for me, it's a little bit tough to get my head around it because the Jags were like, hey, this is how we're going to build it. We're going to be the best defense in the league, and we're going to ram it down your throat and boot action with bowl uh, with Bortles and that fire burn out. So maybe they're like, all right, let's hit a little bit of the reset button, not all the way, but let's take we'll take Filippo, and if you want to open up our passing game a little bit, maybe I could okay, maybe good, but good for the Jags because it certainly didn't work out this year. All right, well, let's take a quick break. If you're listening to this on YouTube, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit the little thumbs up button. If you're uh, on Twitter, find us at the FF Dynasty. We'll be back right after this break. <laughs> 